It's a brush pass, quick and simple. Do you love spy books, movies, and TV? Then the Spybrary podcast is for you. Since 2017, host Shane Whaley and Spybrary field agents around the world dispatch reviews and interviews with authors, historians, and fellow spy fans. We discuss everything from John le Carre, Len Dayton, Paul Vidic, Graham Greene, Mick Heron, Charles Cumming, Ben McIntyre, and many more. Spybrary is available on all good podcast apps and at spybrary.com. You are listening to Brush Pass on Spybrary. Quick reviews sent in by spy fans for spy fans. And welcome to episode 205 of the Spybrary podcast. Delighted to be back with you. I do apologize that we've gone dark. Don't worry, the network has not been rolled up. In my game, in my industry, which is not espionage, because we all know I would make for the world's worst spy. I'd be a good agent handler, I think, but I wouldn't be good in the field. I'm scared of snakes, not very good with women, can't hold my booze, one of the worst fighters you'll see, So, uh, and and don't like pain, so I couldn't handle torture very well. I'd give up the secrets right away. Uh, I digress. Uh, Seriously, thank you for sticking with us. It's just this time of year is incredibly busy in my industry. Uh, I'm flying out tomorrow to Berlin. Uh, it's a hardship, right? <laughs> it's actually for a week of business, lots of conferences, very little time for spy stuff on this trip, but uh, always love getting out to Berlin. And actually, I'm going to talk about a Berlin spy book shortly. Uh, before I do that, just want to let you know, we are going to be back at regular cadence from April. And a call out, if you want to interview an author or an intelligence expert. And I'm particularly keen to find those of you who are well up on intelligence history, espionage history. If you want to come and interview some of our nonfiction authors, then Spybury is here for you. Don't worry about the technical stuff. We'll get you set up. Uh, Drop me a line at shane at spybury.com. And in the meantime, don't forget, come and see us in our community. Tons of posts in there every day. It will definitely make you poorer in terms of finances, but richer in terms of your reading because there are so many spy book, movie, and TV recommendations in our community that you can find at spybury.com forward slash community. All right, today's dead drop. Ian McEwan, The Innocent. So I picked this book up purely because it was in Tim Shipman's list. I'm hoping by now you know about Tim's list. He ranked his favorite 125 spy authors. And Ian McEwan was featured in the Times in 2008 as one of the 50 greatest British writers since 1945. And the Daily Telegraph ranked him number 19 in the list of the 100 most powerful people in British culture. So where did our friend Tim score him? So he scored him 75, 77, I beg your pardon, on the 125 list. Uh, I'm going to read out to you why. So he says, Ian McEwen is another literary novelist who has tried his hand at espionage. Unlike Sebastian Falks, an author I usually like, but whose attempt at a Bond novel reads like a literary novelist who thinks writing a thriller is easy and somewhat beneath him, McEwen has twice come up with a winner, perhaps because he treated the subject matter like any other subject for literary examination. The Innocent is a twisty gripper of a book which embroils a naive telecoms worker in the 1950s tunnel the Allies built under the Russian sector of Berlin to tap their communications. So he's placed him 77, but he says it's high-quality stuff. Uh, If he'd written four books like this, Tim says he would have scored him much higher. Uh, I agree with that. So I'm going to come clean. I had never read any, or I haven't read any of Ian McEwan's work until I picked up The Innocent. And as you all know, I have a Berlin spybury. So uh, this was uh, my collection of Berlin books. Love the cover that I have here. It's uh, the Brandenburg Gate with, uh, let me see, which side of the wall is this on? It's on the western side and uh, looking into the east. Very intriguing picture, which... uh, will grab many of our listeners' interests, I know. Um, So that's the cover. And let me tell you now about the book. So 
The Innocent by Ian McEwan is set in 1950s Berlin during the very early stages of the Cold War. So the wall isn't even up yet, which is why I had to do a double look at that cover. And I could only tell because of the top of the Brandenburg Gate, which way that's facing. Um, the book follows the story. So our hero, if you will, the innocent, is Leonard Marnham, who is a young British telecoms technician who is sent to Berlin to work on a top secret project. Uh, that's the espionage piece, right? So Leonard is naive and inexperienced young man who lives with his parents in England and has this lovely home uh, apartment in Berlin at a time where good housing was hard to come by for the masses in Berlin, right? It's the 50s. It's only 10 years or so since the end of the Second World War, and you've all seen pictures of what Berlin looked like in 45. So he has this lovely apartment, uh, but he's naive and he's inexperienced, and he quickly becomes uh, embroiled in a... Um, dangerous game of deceit and the novel is is masterfully written so McEwen apparently his trademark for writing is attention to detail and descriptive prose and it has that in abundance but what I want to say to you is don't let that put you off because there are only 226 pages um, in The Innocent so it's not a doorstop or of a book and I read it over a weekend and I thoroughly enjoyed it so the de- it is detailed but I liked that because I felt like I was in 1950s Berlin I felt like I was in the tunnel because that's the top secret project he's been brought in to work with the with the the Americans so the Allies many of you will know your history were building a ter- tunnel to listen to the Soviet military uh, communications at Karlshorst and they dug under the east. And as you all know, the, the tunnel was eventually discovered and the East Germans and the Soviets made a lot of PR out of that, that the West were the aggressors and they were digging underneath East Berlin. What's really interesting for me in this book, though, is that's the backdrop, right? That's the canvas, that's the espionage piece. But our he- hero, Leonard, is not a secret agent, right? He's a telecoms expert. So he comes in sees the tunnel and they give him all this equipment that he has to configure and get ready to be placed under the tunnel. It's a very monotonous job, right? So this is as far away from James Bond that you can get. Um, And Ian McEwen does a wonderful job of describing that monotony, although he's working on a very, very important and crucial project when you think of the intelligence we could glean from that tunnel. Um, The characters are very well developed and The setting of post-war Berlin, I feel, is vividly portrayed. As you all know, I've read a ton on that part of history. I felt it was very genuine, very authentic. I could almost feel that Berliner Luft in my face as I was reading about Berlin. I think the strongest elements of this novel is the tension and the suspense. So you're never quite sure who to trust or what will happen next. And the twists and turns of the plot kept me engaged over a whole weekend and kind of guessing, I was like, where's this going to end? Where's this going to go? Um, and at its core, The Innocent is really a story about actions and the consequences of those actions, both big and small. And Lena's decisions and actions have far-reaching consequences. Um, and McEwen does a really good job of exploring the ideas of how one small cho- choice can change the course of a life. In terms of the espionage, you know, I would say that this book, um, everything kind of changes. You know, the book starts out with this simple romance. So he meets his lover in a Berlin bar. She likes him because he's a virgin, not very experienced with women. And that's where the title comes from, The Innocent. It morphs from that simple kind of romance, spy, intrigue, innocent abroad to something much more sinister and unsettling, and I'm not going to go into it. But it's not jarring. It is dramatic. Um, but from the moment, that moment, everything changes. There's one significant event in the book, and everything changes, and all the relationships are remolded and remade. Um, the book is short, as I say, and there's also a postscript at the end which describes what happens to the major characters, which I thought was really good, um, some reviewers, some critics really didn't like that. I thought I, I would have been left hanging without that postscript. So I really did enjoy it. Um, I think it's a gripping novel. It's a thought provoking novel. It definitely kept me on the edge of my seat. 
And I really like McEwen's writing and his storytelling, and I'm keen to read more. And Tim tells us, and you can um, find Tim's list at spybury.com forward slash Tim's list. There's a second espionage novel, Sweet Tooth. So I'm going to have to track that one down because, uh, you know, I, I really did enjoy this book. So it's a, it's a worthy part of my Berlin spybury. And before I leave you, I don't often do this on a brush pass, but I, I wanted to read a passage to you, if I may. There's no spoilers in here. It just kind of sets the, sets the scene for you in terms of where our hero's head is at. So he's leaving the tunnel. Oh, do you know what I forgot to mention? Um, there are cameos in this by one George Blake. And many of you know George Blake, the trailer. And the history there, of course, is we pretty much, he was telling the Soviets that the Allies were about to dig a tunnel before they'd even struck ground, right? So it's one of the ironies of, of Cold War history. Um, and he appears in this book a couple of times. Um, I don't want to say any more than that. I think I think Ian McEwan did it really well. Didn't over-egg it. I thought it worked, the cameo piece and and how he kind of falls into the story. So again, uh, sorry, I should, probably should have mentioned that at the start. But this is a brush pass, right? Brush pass is as if I'm in the pub telling you about the book. So it's not a full uh, polished review. But anyway, I just want to read this passage out to you. So he's leaving work, which as you can imagine, it's a subterranean base. He comes out, the top of the base is all disguised. So the East Germans don't think any suspicious, anything suspicious is going on there. And it said... Uh, the road was dark, but he knew every step of the way now. His great coat gave poor protection against the cold. He could feel the hairs in his nostrils stiffening. When he breathed through his, his mouth, the air stung his chest. He could sense the frozen flat fields around him. He passed the shacks where refugees from the Democratic Republic had set up home. There were kids playing out in the dark. And as his steps rang out on the cold road, they shushed each other and waited until he had passed. Every yard away from the warehouse was a yard towards Maria. He had spoken to no one about her at work, and he could not talk to her about what he did. He was not certain whether this time spent traveling between his two secret worlds was when he was truly himself, when he was able to hold the two in balance and know them to be separate from himself, or whether this was the one time he was nothing at all, a void traveling between two points. Only on arrival, at this end or that, would he assume or be assigned a purpose? And then he would be himself, or one of his selves again. What he did know for sure was that these speculations would begin to fade as his train approached his Kreuzberg stop, and that as he hurried across the courtyard and took the five flights of stairs, two or even three at a time, they would have vanished. Great writer. Really enjoy it. Gutted that he's only written two. Uh, Ian, if you're listening to the show, get on it. Um, I think there's a lot more spy books to come from you. <laughs> I'd love to read more. Anyway, that's my uh, slightly longer than usual brush pass review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your brush pass reviews, right? As I said, these don't. Ha this is not literary criticism. It's just you've read a book, you've met a spy fan in the pub, you're talking about it. You can drop those. Just record them on your phone. I'll do all the tech stuff on it, right? Record it on your phone, message it to me, shane at spybury.com. Let's get the brush passes back up and running. They are some of our most popular episodes. Uh, and I'm delighted to say we are bringing back Dead Drop 5, which is our Desert Island Discs for spy books. So on that note, thank you very much for tuning in. Stay safe, stay well. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, stay warm. Take care. Can you pull off a brush pass? send in your review to shane at spybrary.com. Thanks for listening to the Spybrary podcast. You don't have to wait for the next episode. Join the conversation happening now at facebook.com slash spybrary. And on Twitter at spybrary.